Welcome and thank you for joining us for another segment of Monterey Park Police in the Community. I'm Community Service Officer Winnie Fong and today we have a very special guest that's going to talk to us about safeguarding your home, your family and yourself for the holiday season. With Halloween coming around the corner, it's important to be wary of the things that you may see on the streets or when trick-or-treating with your children. So I'm going to welcome Lieutenant Chris Keller today um, and he's going to give us some information and tips on how to safeguard ourselves for the holidays. Thank you and welcome. Well, thanks very much, Winnie. I'm glad to be here, and I'd like to say happy holidays to everyone because it's a wonderful time. Uh, my family enjoys it, and I'm sure yours does too. But we do want people to have really safe holidays and enjoy them and not become the victim of a crime or a tragedy. Okay. Well, before we begin, um, give us a little history about your um, employment with the Monterey Park Police Department. Okay. I've been with the Monterey Park Police Department almost 30 years. Uh, I started here as a young officer. I'm a little older now. Uh, currently, I'm assigned as a patrol watch commander. I work with a shift of uh, young officers, and uh, we try to keep the city safe. Mm -hmm. I've worked uh, many other assignments in my career, and uh, I'm enjoying my assignment right now. Okay, well, glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. Well, with the closest holiday coming around the corner, um, which is Halloween, are there um, any specific things that we should be cautious of? Because I know we do partake in a lot of festivities, um, a lot of trick-or-treating with our children. So why don't you give us um, some tips on how, how to safeguard ourselves as far as costumes and safety is concerned? Well, I even brought some notes so I don't want to miss anything. Uh, I love Halloween. It was always one of my favorite holidays as a child. I like costumes and my children just love Halloween. Uh, I'm not sure if my wife can find one more decoration for my house, <laughs> but if it's out there, they'll be there. But Halloween is an important time uh, to also watch out for our children. And some of the basic things that we want to watch out for, of course, traffic safety is important. Uh, as we know, children under the age of 10 or 11 really aren't aware of how it is about crossing the street or distances of cars. So I want to give you some tips to help keep your kids safe, uh, both in traffic and uh, in trick-or-treating and all those fun things. One of the first things, of course, to do is make sure if your kids go out trick-or-treating that you go with them. Children should always be accompanied by an adult. And of course, what should that adult have? A flashlight, uh, because it's going to be dark and sometimes it can be rainy and children are excited children are going to run around uh, they're going to be looking forward to the treats they get so a few basic tips and I have my notes here okay. um, you never want to let children go out alone I'm going to emphasize that they must be accompanied by an adult even older children uh, look for houses that are well lighted that look like they're welcoming your children and go to the door with them uh, let them do their trick-or-treating and have fun a few things about their costuming. Uh, as we know, we still sometimes do like to have pumpkins with candles in them. Uh, fire safety is very important. Your children should not be wearing costumes uh, that can catch on fire. They should be fire preventive, or excuse me, fire retardant materials. Uh, go up to them, uh, watch them as they get their treats. Uh, a few other things about costumes. Every once in a while we read in the news about some terrible tragedy with some person with a toy gun that comes in contact with the police. Remember, it's dark. Uh, it's not always obvious that your children do not give them toy guns that look like real firearms. That is just a mistake these days. It's, it can lead to a terrible tragedy. Uh, be very careful crossing the street. Uh, make sure that you look because they're often not going to be looking. Uh, particularly be careful if they're wearing masks because they may not be able to see very well. And the other thing that you must do is once they get all those great treats that we shouldn't eat too much of, check that candy and check those treats. If it's not sealed, if there's anything suspicious about it, throw it out. Uh, sometimes you can call. Uh, there have been local hospitals that will x-ray Halloween oh, wow. treats at times, but the best thing is stick to the commercial uh, store-bought treats uh, and just be safe. And if there's anything at all about it that doesn't look right, uh, dispose of it. And if you were to, unfortunately, get some kind of treat that you think anybody had adulterated or put something that shouldn't be there, you need to call your local police department. We would want to know about that. That's very serious. Okay. Well, I do know that when I used to go trick-or-treating, my mother um, basically avoided residences because of that reason, primarily because of that reason, because she didn't know. And we did a lot of trick-or-treating at local malls or local yes. um, just public places that are occupied by a lot of 
And one other thing along these lines that we'd appreciate is with all the ghosts and goblins, children get excited. Uh, sometimes even teenagers, nice kids, uh, think that Halloween night can be a free-for-all, uh, throwing eggs, doing some malicious damage. Mm -hmm. And uh, make sure particularly your older kids, your teenage kids, realize that this is, this is good fun. It's, it's not a free-for-all. Right. And uh, throwing an egg or something at somebody's house is not much fun if it's your house and you have to clean it. Okay. Well, thank you for those tips. Um, let's move on. And with that being said, there's Thanksgiving and the holiday that quickly just chases behind Halloween. And we often um, go to dinner parties and we go on vacation and we do basically the big bulk of our shopping of the year during this time. Touching on the first, what are some steps we should take before going on that gathering to see our families and friends, basically leaving your house for maybe even just the night? Are there some ways that we can safeguard our home? Yes, there are. There's some basic things. And, and I think anything that I'm going to tell anybody is really common sense. Uh, and so we'll think of it as reminders. Uh, some, some very simple things when you leave your home. Uh, as really with any time of the year, uh, thieves are looking to steal something. So don't leave something that looks valuable that attracts the thieves. And most thieves don't want to be seen and don't want to be caught. So make your home look like it's lived in. Make it look like somebody's home. Leave some lights on. Don't obviously leave things out like newspapers and mails. Make sure everything is locked. If you have an alarm system, make sure it's in order and it's turned on. Um, I'll also give a little pitch for our neighborhood watch that we have here in Monterey Park. It's a, it's a great thing to have your neighbors and your friends keeping an eye on your house. And along those lines, if you do see something at your neighbor's house, call us. When you see something suspicious, call us. We want to go out and check. I'm always disturbed when people say afterwards, I didn't want to call, I didn't want to bother you guys. Please bother us. Please call. Uh, the way that we catch most of these thieves and most of our burglars is because citizens see something suspicious and call us. So make your home look lived in. Make it difficult. Harden the target, as they like to say. Don't leave things unlocked. Don't leave easy access for a thief. And don't leave things that are going to attract thieves that can be seen through the windows. Because this time of year, Thieves know people are away from home and they know there are valuables out there. So don't make your house a, an easy target. Make it a difficult one and watch out for your neighbors too. Right. Very far too often I hear people say these things after the fact. But more specifically, when you do go on a long vacation, say anywhere from three, three days to a week, are there certain tips that we can give to our residents or e even just our viewers about um, maybe contacting a neighbor to pick up mail or any other tips of that, that sort? Sure, there are some obvious things. Um, newspapers. One of the quickest ways to tell that someone is gone is piled up newspapers or secondly, piled up mail. There's a couple things you can do. If you get newspapers, put a stop on them. And you usually need to call about a week beforehand to make sure that the people okay. delivering the paper get that information. And you can also have the post office hold your, nail, your mail. But sometimes you're going to get throwaway papers or junk mail or might mail. Talk to one of your neighbors. Ask them to check your house and check and pick up your neighbor. Your neighbor. Pick up your mail. I'm a little nervous. I'm not a TV star. <laughs> uh, these are part of looking out for each other. Uh, and leave that light on. Uh, there are very inexpensive timers you can get. Thieves do not want to be seen and they want to find a home that's easy access that they can get in secretly and not be seen and get away with your property. So uh, those are all some basic things. Keep that house looking lived in. Don't put out an advertisement that you're not here. Come on in. Nobody's home. Okay. Well, those are some really helpful tips. Again, if you'd like to contact us, you may, um, the Community Relations Bureau, in order to get some more information. But before we even get into that, one of my most favorite activities during the holidays is obviously shopping. Ah. And a lot of us do it, male, female, kids, old and young. And I know at this time of year, people become easy targets because there's a lot of cash transactions that flow to and from. There's a lot of money that's being spent. So what can someone do to make themselves uh, or not make themselves an easy target at this time of year, especially when holiday shopping? Uh, you're absolutely right, Winnie, and I hate to confess it, but I like to shop too. Um, <laughs> there's some basic things, uh, and it, once again, it's common sense. What do thieves want? Thieves want money and things they can sell. What are you going to be carrying with you when you're shopping? Money. Uh, 
Right. And what are you going to be doing? You're going to be buying things that someone may want to steal. So some basic safety. I think I'm going to start first with ATMs because this can be a problem. Automatic teller machines, how do we ever live without them? I know, not, I know that I didn't. But automatic teller machines can be an invitation to thieves. Do not use automatic teller machines late at night or in isolated locations. People actually sit and watch these occasionally. We've had crime reports where we know that people were waiting for a victim. If you must get money, go inside a store. Almost all convenience stores and supermarkets have ATM machines. And you may have to pay a dollar or two transaction fee. Here in City Hall, we have an ATM machine out in the lobby. I believe it costs a dollar to use, and I use it regularly. Uh, avoid going up to ATM machines by yourself late at night. If you must pay that extra transaction fee, spend the dollar or two. It's worth your safety. Absolutely. If you can, too, use credit cards if that's how you shop as much. Don't carry large sums of cash. Don't advertise that you have large sums of cash. And be aware of your surroundings. When you're going to and from particularly your car, especially if you have packages or ladies, if you have a purse, scan. That's a word that I like to use. Scan and look at your surroundings. Watch if there are people following you. Check. And if there are, go right back to the store. And if they're suspicious enough, call us. We'll be out there to check them. But then you're going to have packages. You're going to have things you buy. We have a lot of break-ins where people break into cars and steal packages. Uh, cars have windows. Mm -hmm. You can look in windows and see things. Put those packages in the trunk. If you have a hatchback like I have, pull the little curtain over it. Keep the car locked. Don't advertise that you have things to stale. Stale? stale. <laughs> things that you have to steal. There again, I'm not a movie star. Um, some of these basic things, scan your surroundings, watch out for ATMs, and another thing too, watch out for scam artists. Don't ever give your credit card number or any personal information over the phone to anyone who calls you. If it's a legitimate call, you really think it is, get the phone number and call that company back. Even if they appear to have information about you. And that also goes for the internet. Do not give out personal information, social security cards, names, dates of birth. Legitimate businesses will never call you and ask you for that kind of information. You should initiate that transaction. Okay. Well, Lieutenant Keller, thank you very much for joining us today. For you out there, these are some very small and very basic steps that you can take to ensure the holiday safety of yourself and, of course, your family. So t do, please do take these things into consideration when out shopping and when trick-or-treating, or even, you know, just going out for the holiday season for dinner parties. Um, again, thank you very much. And for you out there, stay tuned. We'll be right back with a very special guest.